Uh, I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, here with Silo Director Morton Tildum. Morton, uh, you directed the pilot, episodes two and three, and it's the pilot where most of the world building takes place as you set the tone for the show. So talk us through the specific pressures of taking the reins on a series pilot. Yeah, I mean, uh, the uh, the uh, I actually the whole world building uh, concept was one of the things that actually attracted me to the to this project. Um, so I came in when you know when we haven't even decided where in the world we're going to shoot this. So so um, uh, I feel creating this 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 world from scratch. Uh, I find it was some of the things which is which is. I find very interesting. It's it's a it's a show that deals with a lot of interesting aspects, like what is who owns the truth and what is what does it mean for a society that doesn't have history. Uh, this is a world which doesn't know how long they've been there. They don't know who created them. It's a sci-fi show that goes back in time as much as it goes forward. So so that was something that was that was incredibly interesting. And and uh, so so when we started to look at this. I think a lot of inspiration for how how designing it is like looking at like the old city of Barcelona, how it's something evolved, which you know is being it's it's like a living organism that that constantly changes and new things being built and and then we start from like as you know that there there as everybody knows who's seen the show there are several silos so so if you're going to build that what would you do you would build building blocks and everything will be curved and circular. And that would also give it a very unique aesthetic. So there was there was all it was great fun. It was sort of like how would they think? What would be the rules and and how how would this be made? So so that's that's the approach for this. And at the same time, you wanted to make something that when you when you saw a room, when you see something in silo, it should you should immediately know what it is. Like this is a sheriff office. This is a, a cafeteria. This is an office. But at the same time, it should look unlike any sheriff office, any cafeteria, or any office you ever seen. So it's it's both be very relatable and at the same time feel unique. So it it, it was a great fun to be to design and build this. Yeah, I mean, so I've never really seen anything like Silo before on TV, and I was so hooked from the get go. Um, I wonder when you're doing the first three episodes, do you, do you need to block shoot them or were you able to focus on the pilot before moving forward with the next two? Um, because of, you know, this was shot during the pandemic. Um, the plan was to shoot the three of them together as one block. But uh, I, you know, I was also sort of like overseeing the other episodes. And um, and I actually ended up the lot being sort of like the last the last day of production was actually me, which was uh, for, for some weird reason. Um, and um, it, it has to be spread out. We, we especially episode three was something that took a long time to build. The, uh, the generator and uh, the down deep wasn't ready. So we had to postpone all of that. So we actually we started production in September, October, and uh, I shot that late May, beginning of June. Wow. wow. So it was a giant undertaking it's a i think you had close to 80 set unbelievable i know it's just it's hard to fathom especially during the pandemic like a lot of other big concept shows um and just for people to understand it's not like you came in directed and said all right we're done see you later like you've actually had quite a a really substantial role in bringing this show to life correct yeah no i was it was the uh, so so the the thing is that you know as Grand Yas was the showrunner um, was involved in you know it was involved with, it was in California and and uh, this we shot decided to shoot this in 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 London and uh, I think Apple contacted me they said they needed they wanted the showrunner to come in and sort of like help create the world. So me and Graham and then after all uh, uh, Gavin Bouquet who's the production designer. We literally spent, I think, eight, nine months, literally just coming up with ideas, sending, you know, sketches around, discussing it between us, and sort of like trying to create this. And, and the the level of detail in this show is, is was it was incredible how to build it. Like it's it's so 
like we have to find out how everything has been made. How can they have this? Because you know they've been three hundred years underground. Uh, they only have history, 140 years. They don't know what happened before those 140 years, but this is a 300-year-old city in the ground. And it's a, it's, it, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, and uh, so, so it's like, I felt it's like doing at least two movies in the, just the amount of work you have to do. But creating also afterwards was, was you know, creating the VFX, so to get, you know, the whole the whole music and the whole sound working with the composer we wanted to sort of like the music to represent how the silo sounded and uh and like you hear all these like voices yeah like the silo is the silo is a it's, it's something that transports you not to a different location but it transports people through time the idea behind the silo is that people walk in and then hundreds of years a change humanity walks out so that's the that's the idea behind it, um, and uh, it's it's and you see if you see the opening title you see just echoes of people you see at least like ghostly people walking around and that is kind of like the idea that humanity doesn't really humans doesn't really matter it's the silo that endures everybody's in there just to be transported transport mankind to this uh, this these hundreds of years so it was it's. Which is Yulao's books, which has all these. It's very deep, and it, it, it's a it's a very interesting project to 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 do that. And the, the these all these ghosts, these people who lived on the silo, didn't know why they were there and happening. We, we represented that through the music, through the voices we hear. It was like this, this uh, angelic voices, and it's now it was so fun to actually try to bring all these details into the into the show. Yeah, I know that's that's. That's why I just found this so fascinating. And I was so eager to learn more. And of course, um, you know, the show keeps its cards close to its chest. If you haven't read Wool by Hugh Howie, then you don't know what's going to happen and what a season two might look like and so on and so forth. And so that was a great journey for me. Um, in the world of Silo, what remains of civilization is literally and figuratively siloed from knowing about the past, as you say, and history. Okay. And so that means power is information, uh, is information, um, and who has the the information? Did it occur to you and the team how prescient and relevant the show is to our society's current struggle with misinformation and truth? Oh, very much so. Something we discussed a lot, and also it it shows how vulnerable you are when you don't have history, and unfortunately. That is something that we see happen a lot now. It's like people trying to change the narrative. I mean, just, you know, we're not going to talk about politics here, but just looking at the US, like what even happened January 6th? <laughs> it's not long ago, but there's like, what actually happened? Who owns the history? Uh, sorry. Um, and and, uh, and um, that is that is so important. And it's, it's a, what's the... Uh, Part of their messages. Um, so, so, and it's it's so important that we learn from history, and history is there to guide us. And so, if you take away a uh, major society that that doesn't have history, that doesn't have knowledge that goes back. I mean, these, these people just know anything. They don't, you know, they, they, they look at the screen, they see something that looks like a sky. They don't know what the sky is. They don't know what stars are. They don't even know that they're on a planet. They don't know. Like they, the knowledge contains to what is in the silo. So, so, and what does that do to you? And and how easy it is it to manipulate and and control people when you take away history? Absolutely, and uh, it reminded me also of how authoritarian states emerge uh, when people are afraid, and then people just comply. And of course, not all yeah. of them do. Um, uh, the, the first episode, I think the moment that really hooked me was when Alison Becker, played by Rashida Jones, um, is exiting the silo, cleaning the camera, and then she drops dead a few footsteps away. I was just, I thought the whole sequence was so beautifully put together. And I was wondering how difficult it was to get that sequence correct. Because that one was, I think it's the one that most fans really, really loved. And then, of course, because we got to know this character and then she's gone. I, I think that's and this is this is I mean I know people but 
the, ep the pilot episode is actually the short story that you, Laurie, wrote just as most like that and released it on its own and became sort of like an online phenomenon. And, uh, and, uh, which is, you know, Allison and Holson, the, the story about them, which inspired him to later on write the, write the books. And it is so interesting that, because you, you, I like that you're starting off, and I love that in the script, that it's, we're starting on a couple that just wants to have a kid, that just wanted to become parents. It's such a relatable and not mundane, but it's such a everyday dilemma for a couple. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's, then it's just, fit into this world so you have something that's very really something you can really understand and grab onto and then that's that's the way into this 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 world and and when it, i was finding it so interesting that you are that these uh these characters which you start to really get close to and care for and 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 like and relate to and then they die and it's something really brave i think when a show like that to do that and uh, and um, uh, it's it's and that that sequence was it was it was it was great fun to do, but it's also a very challenge because it was shot over such a long period of time. First day of shooting was everything that happened outside. We had one day the whole season. We had one day of uh, exterior shooting, <laughs> which is what happened outside. That was the first day, uh, and that was literally so I shot. Rashida going out, you know, uh, David, David Yellow, and then uh, Rebecca for the ending. So all of that was the uh, was was the first day of shooting, and then so you you know have to plan everything what happened, and then later on you you had you know to see all the extras, and then you have to explain to them what goes on, and uh, and uh, then you're shooting that, and then you're shooting David, etc. So it's like everything of that is being shot over, you know. A, period of close to 10 months bits and pieces so it's actually a very elaborate sequence that that's that's you should be bits by bit and piece by piece and I'm, I'm very happy how it came together and I'm, I'm really happy you saw it because it is a very emotional piece and and uh, and uh, it was it was hard to shoot because it contained so many elements that all have to sort of like fit together and click together yeah I think it's even more impressive if you're explaining it that it was shot so out of sequence because I think the 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 extras in particular give it give it so much more um gravitas because they're so excited and then worried about mm -hmm. Alison being outside and whether she'll clean. Um, I could talk about it all day, but I'll move on. Um, so here's another question: Silo contemplates big existential ideas, right, about power and class and truth in this retro futuristic industrial yep. sci-fi lens. But there's a real thoughtfulness to the way you know to your or your eye for detail on emotional character moments that I really loved, that are intimate and domestic. Was it difficult to find space for character and nuance when setting up the grand concept of the show? I mean, a lot of this came from, from came from the the writing and our first conversation that's that's Graham and I had, Graham Yost and I had, uh, which is that we didn't want. And one of the things we made different from the book is that in the book, everybody is very overalls. Everybody, everybody is very the same thing. And we said, no, we want them to be visually more similar to our life. And we wanted to, to feel that the silo, but we didn't want the silo to be, feel like this very dystopian, horrible place to live. We wanted it to feel, to recognize uh our world in it so it, it has it's sort of like a, a a version a mirror of our world so i added we added like all these kind of small scenes which i was able to shoot which was like films and like like a morning scene where you know you have a barista making coffee and 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 selling pastry and and the coffee you can have on the go when you move around so we, we did we added all of these smaller things and and uh and as we said, you know, had a date night with uh, Alison Holson, a date night at the at the local restaurant, and all of these things just to make it feel as as the as much as possible that that you know this 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 could be a very nice place to live, but we just start scratching on it. We feel like oh, it it's it it has all these like 
uh, this abyss, uh, abyss of um, of uh, secrets and and darkness. That's that's uh, that's just awaiting them. And and uh, it's it's a you know it's 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 a feeling which is uncomfortable when you you feel you're being lied to and there is a you're being used and there's being controlled, which is a of course something we of course deal with now with which surveillance to be is it possible to have privacy today is it you know that there's, there's always somebody who knows everything about you you how you use your money how what you do on social media what you like what you don't like so so in many ways it's it's it is it is extremely relevant and and that made us important that you should it should it should feel like us living in a silo that's why we wanted to have it as much as you said, relatable and private character moments and also moments of everyday life in, in the silo. Yeah. Um, anyone watching is there's spoilers now, so go away if you haven't seen it. But um I I was blown away with the revelation at the end that although there are lots of lies and misinformation in the silo, they were kind of telling the truth that the outside world is toxic and post-apocalyptic. I was expecting it to be this beautiful Valhalla. Yeah. Um, and so now I'm dying to know more. What did you think of that reveal when you first read the scripts and the novels and so on and so forth? I mean, that is the, that is the, uh, that is the fun part. It's also, if you're going to look, I mean, at this core, it's also a mystery show. Mm -hmm. It's it has a lot of themes. It had a lot of messaging. It's, it's it raises big questions, but at this core, it's something we can have fun with, which actually is this a thriller. It is a mystery show, and it is fun to lead people expectation one way, and then uh, and then turn it around, and say no, it's not, and and you you kind of guessing, and it's like it's like that. No, it's not, and it's and this is something that we. Definitely did on purpose to to play with and uh, and uh, and it's not it's just only started. They can just wait until you know season two and hopefully season three. And it's uh, it's a it is really a a ride when it comes to you know revealing what actually happened and what's going to happen. And it's a and that's the fun part of it. Yeah, that, that's uh, great. I, that, that, I have to say, I think I think Silo has some of the best end of season cliffhangers that I've seen. Yeah, absolutely. Just keeping us waiting and wanting more. Um, my final question is more a general one about your work as a director and your process. And on Silo and on other projects like Defending Jacob and obviously your Oscar-nominated Imitation Game, when you are witnessing a really committed performance from an actor, how do you tend to collaborate and provide guidance or guardrails without compromising their intensity and that raw emotion? I think that, I mean, working with actors is, is you know, something which is, I, I think is the most rewarding and, and interesting part of being a director. Talk a lot about the world building, but but sitting down, I think, I, to me, I think the, the most important part of directing is actually the time you spend before shooting with them. And a lot of the, also with the writer, actually, you working on the scenes before. So you as a director really knows what the scene really is about. So you can go into your actor and really have that conversation before. And this is what I'm, this is what the character goes through. This is why we have this scene. This is what, not what's being said, that's what's being done. This is what actually goes on inside. This is what, this is the conflict. This is the thing. This is the thing they're lying about. This is the this is the secret. So you can have those conversations with actors, and I find that the more we all know the the, the that inner core of what a character is is doing in a scene, uh, acting and directing becomes so much easier. We're not finding it. We're not trying to figure out what it is. It's like we know what actually goes on, and I've been blessed with working with a lot of great actors, and and it as 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 long as we're all in the same tone of what and, and agreed on and talked about what 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 the core, what the importance, what what this is, what is the decision, what is the lie, what is the thing that's been unsaid, what's the what's the thing they want out of this moment, what's the thing they're afraid of, um, and I think that's the so in many ways I feel like a lot of the most important conversation you have it happens before you end up on the set, and then I think it's the 
on the, and, the, and when you are on the day before you start rehearsing, I always like to be in the room before I come, come in early, have a coffee, just walk around and 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 feel the set. If I don't have a very specific blocking in mind, I you know I might have some few ideas of some very specific shots I want and where that and and then sort of like feel the what the natural movements would be. Like if I if I was if I was being nervous, what where would I go? How where would I sit down? Where would I hide? If there was an intimate scene, where would I like to sit to be intimate? So you just kind of like lets the room and the space uh, navigate some of that. And then you communicate that to the actor and you ask them to feel it. Like what where where did where does it what how does the room speak to you? And and uh, and then you start blocking it and uh and um I, I think that's being prepared, knowing what you want. And also communicating that as good as you can to the actor. I think that's 90% of the job. And then it's more about just listening and, and then talking to them if, if, if it feels true or not. If it, it isn't, does this communicate the way we want it to be? Or are you projecting it too much? Do you want it too much? Are you, are you, you know, I know what, do you have to, can you be more subtle on it? Can you, can you hide it better? Uh, should we do a version where you're allowed to let the anger be explosive or should we have a quiet anger where you control it and then you can play with I like to to twirl around and do different takes and, and try different things and sometimes yeah. shoot several things in a row so they don't feel like I'm doing something and then waiting for judgment I say let's let's do let's we discuss it let's try and really go back to one immediately and try to do three takes and I in this one I want this, and then you I want you to gradually get more angry for every take, and so they don't feel every take is being judged, and everything like that. They 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 know they can just they know they're gonna go right after, so they can be more free and let loose a little bit, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's fascinating. Um, Morton, thank you for your time today. Congratulations on Silo, and um, thank yeah. you so much. We look forward to seeing more.